If you spend money on ads and you don't know who you're selling to, you waste your money. The organic way is the best way for you to understand more what you bring to people. When you talk about growth, people tend to see the positive aspect of it. They see mm. the exciting aspect. That's so good. But growing is also a risk unless you anticipate. Acquiring a company is not necessarily something that will cost you money. You can definitely acquire a company by what you will bring to that company. Scaling is a formula. Scaling is sales times organization. Hello guys, welcome again to the Scale Talks today with Antoine. We are here to talk about scaling companies and many things around. So Antoine, welcome again. Hello. Hi. Hi everyone. Good to have you. And it's a long time we didn't make uh, a content together again. You had a lot of person you interviewed, but now let's keep back into creating content together. So today the subject is about growth. Acquisition, organic growth or um, acquisition of growth, the two topics are different and they both have some, they both bring some opportunities and risks and so we're going to talk about that. Yeah, and I will maybe begin with uh, a differentiation of those two because for some people growth, okay, uh, what it is, we know that there is uh, organics, so organic growth is something that comes uh, with the business by visibility that is um, naturally made. So it's not made by uh, paying ads, it's not made by doing events or whatever. No, those people come because they discovered you by themselves or by awareness, of course. But you didn't pay to get those people. So it's organic. And on the other side, we have the acquisition where you optimize uh, steps mainly with paid funnels to bring people to whatever you need to bring them for. That's only one aspect. Um, you can acquire leads by paying for ads, but there are more options. The ad things is if you think from a digital channel standpoint, but from a physical um, standpoint. standpoint, from uh, mergers and acquisition standpoint, from a company growth standpoint, you can also do growth acquisition by acquiring the next guy. You can buy a company that's smaller than you. You can buy a company that's bigger than you. You can buy a company that is doing something you're not doing yet. You can buy a company that's doing exactly the same thing as you're doing and kill it just to make sure it disappears. You can buy a company to get their technology. You bring the technology, you kill the company or you kill the company with its brand or you just give your own brand to that company and you expand the range of whatever you're producing. So there are lots of ways to acquire that growth and that's the point. It's differentiating both. I like that because it's way more... Uh, explain that what I bring and many people won't think about that. So that's why today it's important to share about that. First point you want to share on all of that. I think it's better if you start. Lead acquisition, let's talk about digital. Yeah, okay. If we look at the acquisition in terms of uh, digital. Acquisition, it depends on what kind of business, for, of course, you have. You may need uh, to bring uh, traffic to sell them a product like e-commerce or physical product. You may want to bring uh, traffic to generate leads. So why do you want to generate leads? Because you have an offer to sell most of the time a service. Uh, it can be a SaaS, it can be whatever. But you have uh, people and traffic you will want to come to sell something. In terms of digital acquisition, you have always a situation where uh, you need to optimize the way you get that acquisition. But uh, first of all, we will speak about lead acquisition. And in lead acquisition, that is as itself a, a, a world business, you have to find a way as a company to make the people give their email, phone number, whatever, to get in contact with them. Once you've done that, they are in your CRM, so they are in your database and you are able to target some actions. So first step in lead acquisition is, okay, get traffic to get those information. But how do you get to that point? Most of the time, uh, the easiest way is to pay. When you do that uh, paid, you have the possibility to go on different kind of uh, lead generation acquisition. Uh, first, it can be paying for softwares that will do part of job you will have to do manually if 
you will do it. So like automation? Automation. Like playing with um, something that's going to automate your LinkedIn campaigns, your Instagram exactly. campaigns and all with that. With the example you give there, uh, you use it, for example. You can have a software that uh, will, okay, search in a database of LinkedIn, for example, on a B2B basis, uh, search on the database of LinkedIn, uh, scrap, so uh, take all the emails of those person or accounts or link to their accounts so that we can contact them. And this will be automated with uh, uh, something that will send them a um, flow of uh, message, email, message, email, maybe f SMS, depends. And, and so it's a mix of content that's going to be interesting for them, creating value for them. So they think, oh, that brand is good for me. Exactly. And then a call to action. And exactly. then more content and then more call to action. And then more content and, hey, move your ass, just act now. Yeah, right? but first I wanted people to understand how it works before yeah. going that way. So you have to understand it's not something that uh, is fully automatic. You have to set up a system, a funnel that will bring the message, that will bring contact so that you are uh, in touch with the person you've got uh, the, the information. Of course, with the information you've got from those scrapping, from those database you've got for from LinkedIn, for example, you will have to work with it. So get those leads with this kind of automation is a way to do. And what we can do with it, there is a lot to say, we'll go further after. Uh, on the other hand, you have the possibility, as simple as it is, to do some kind of form, and those form push it through ads. So it can be push a form for, I don't know, uh, I will take an example, really, uh, gardening. You need someone to uh, do your garden, so you search garden on Google. You will arrive on a website that says, if you want a price for that, just give your email and we'll send you um, a quotation. Okay, that's a kind of way to generate leads. You will have whatever website, funnel, we don't care, a form to get those emails. And then the person that receives those emails, the company, will just send quotation or contact them directly if they ask for phone number or whatever. But you've got with the form that and the way to send people to that form is through ads. So it can be Google ads, it can be Facebook ads, it can be TikTok ads, it can be Snapchat, it can be LinkedIn ads, it can be whatever you want, any kind of advertising with uh, a database of uh, website or places where they can show your form, your uh, ads, then it's interesting. I will take an example. Um, you have uh, applications you have games, but you have application you use on a daily basis on uh, business, for example. Stay on, um, let's stay on the business side because we talked about LinkedIn, so I want to stay a little on that side. You want leads from people that are uh, companies. Okay, so you will search for uh, application that use um, an advertising uh, platform uh, to be able to put your ads into that platform. So because your ads are in this platform, it will be shown in the application in question. So same, uh, let's do, for example, something we all know uh, with the young people now, Tinder. In Tinder, you have a lot of ads in it. So if you want to be seen by a range of people that usually use Tinder, so the target that is using this application, you will go to the um, ads uh, advertising platform that show ads in Tinder. And then you will push your form, your whatever ads you want to get the data and get those leads from the people. So in generating leads, the most important is to find where your target is, where can you push your form, your, I will stay on the term of form to be simple, your ads, uh, your form to get the lead, to get the data of your people. And once you have them, you can begin the work. But First of all, you need those data. So there is the persona stage, which is you have to work on knowing who you're trying to sell something to. Exact. And then the acquisition process goes through either paid ads, forms, Google, or the organic ones, which is you do videos online. I'll go on that you one, do yeah. Any kind of content, actually, any kind of content, but it's the other way. You don't push forward your content to the person. That person has to see you organically uh, with your content. So you will create content that brings value, that brings you uh, an expertise 
as, as someone that have expertise to be able to catch those people because they see a lot of, st of stuff. And between all of the stuff, uh, if it's not pushed to them, that information, that content, uh, they will maybe not take attention. So you need to create attention. So in organic growth, your job is to create content, but while creating content, get attention. And it's, it's a difficult part. So you have to, by creating attention, so let's be, let's be simple. We do a podcast today. If you want to get attention, as simple as it is, depending on the target, of course, let's say we want a mass market target. Uh, we'll speak about politics. We'll speak about um, uh, the gender uh, polemics. We will speak about any kind of stuff that is currently a polemics. And then, because cute, of that... Cute dogs and cats. Cute, of work, course. They work too. Also, uh, anything that's on a trendy, because it's our target, let's say, uh, that is uh, bringing attention, but stopping the people from scrolling, we have something. So that's where we have to focus because we should be on the main market. But if we are on our market as we are, so today we give a podcast about scaling companies, but not only and especially about how to get to that situation, uh, we definitely need to show the expertise behind. And what we share today, the content we share, is giving the people the expertise of who we are and what we can bring to them. And so they will get interested in what we do. So it's not getting to them and because we are pushed to them, they have to click at a certain point and uh, they see what we do. No, it's because they discover us in the other way. So it's them getting to us. They see what we do, they get interested and slowly they get warmer and warmer to see what we offer behind. So it's a different mechanic, but on the end, uh, the only objective is to have leads. In both cases, I would say there is one common point, which is it's not random. You have to strategize it. You have to prepare it. You have to build it. If you spend money on ads and you don't know who you're selling to, you waste your money. Exactly. If you sell, spend money on ads and you don't have the right funnel, funnel to sell whatever you have in mind, you the lose right your money. The right writing. It's the right wording, yeah. Exactly. So it's the right words, and the right words have to speak to the right person. So it's both both points are linked. Right pain, right uh, solutions for them. So, yeah. The right trigger. Yeah. Um, but if you work on lead acquisition with an organic way, as in you build uh, videos, you write articles online, and then you don't think about, okay, how do I push people to switch How do I push them to click somewhere? How do you build the call to action thing? Then you're doing things for nothing because people are just going to consume whatever content you're creating and then they're going to get out. Thank you for the information. Goodbye. Will exactly. you come back? Not necessarily. So in both cases, you have to start thinking from the beginning in terms of, okay, I'm going to pay or not. But in both cases, what I want to achieve is this and I'm going to build this or that into, into it. Um, so, and technically, you can actually build uh, blog pages that are just going to be about you writing about something you like. But in the end, you have a very nice call to action that's been designed for that. That's going to say, hey, my name is whatever. And I actually happen to solve that problem you're reading about. Click there and I'll send you a PDF. Boom. And that PDF is going to be the first contact. That's the, the clickbait. That's the lead magnet, right? And from there, you're in touch. You have their email address, and we start from where you are. Exactly. In the and um, sometimes people think uh, they should go either in ads or either in organic. As you said, we have to strategize it. And because you strategize it, you understand really fast that ads can be uh, an accelerator while organic is a long-term uh, job. So if you do both, you prepare a steady, um, steady asset for the future, but you have to focus also on both. So sometimes ads is just the best way to, on the quick timing, verify something work or not. But sometimes also um, the, the, the organic way is the best way for you to understand more what you bring to people. So connecting fully <laughs> those two help really to improve the message you want to get to the people and then the target to be more connected to what you bring also. The next point we had in mind was 
acquisition for leads is not just a question of digital. It's not just a question of buying leads, as in with ads and everything we've described. It's also at more advanced levels, obviously, but it's also a question of looking at your market and looking around and doing your market. And you can actually think in terms of, okay, I need to pick new clients in this industry or on that market. For instance, you were talking um, about gardening, right? Maybe you want to start selling plants, right? Because we were just talking about gardening tools, but we want to sell plants as well. So it's the same market, but it's not the same segment. Exactly. And so we have two options. One is we start redoing that work of preparing everything, doing the content, doing the ads and restarting from scratch just to start selling plants. Or we have another option, which is we're going to look at not at the competitors, but at the market to say these guys, they are not on our segments. They are not competitors, but they would be competitors if we started selling plants. And therefore, what we could do is try to buy them out. And as soon as we buy them out, they work with us. And that means we can acquire a new market. It sounds silly. It sounds easy. It's not easy because you have to, of course, look at who they are, what kind of problems they, ha they, ha they have, what kind of market they have, who else is, is around. So there are lots of challenges. That's the risk of it. But the opportunity, since the point is to talk about the opportunities and risk, right? The opportunity is to say you're going to have to pay in the first place as well but you're going to go much faster because you're going to use something that's already there. And especially if it's already there, and I like this example, because if it's already there and they already done it, it means um, they definitely have a process to sell on that special market. Otherwise, they won't be there and you will not have been interested in buying them. So uh, when you do that, but you are in the same market, but not in the same field on that market, in the end, you will be you faster in their field because you have the skill also of the market, but on a different field. And those two feel connected, uh, even if it's two different approach and two different way of selling, maybe uh, because plants or because uh, gardening, I don't know. Um, then you will be better at plants because you have gardening. And because you have gardening, you will be, you uh, will have plants that will grow better. And the opposite is good because they have plants they will need a gardening. So then you create a big synergy by just acquiring this different business on actually the same market. The point is um, sharp. It's very relevant. It works. That's how companies have been growing for decades. Um, but we can even narrow it down even more by differentiating vertical integration and horizontal integration. You want to do it? Go on. I think you have an idea in mind. So two options. One is vertical. The other one is horizontal. We keep our gardening idea, right? Let's keep that one. Vertical means we are going to acquire companies that produce the seeds. So they are very early in the chain, right? So first we need to buy the seeds and then we need to grow the seeds and then we have the plants. And then we need to send to sell the plants to the gardening shop. Right? So that's five different, four or five different steps. Vertical integration means we're going to grow by acquiring the guy who's doing the seeds. Or we're going to grow by acquiring the guy who sells the plants to us. Right? So we can grow our own business by acquiring them so we control our process. It's a way to grow and acquire leads because we are their clients, but they have other clients. So technically, if we also... If we acquire the company that does the seeds, we get the seeds to secure our own channel, but we also get their clients. So we diversify and we increase our turnover and our business. Vertical means we secure the supply chain. Horizontal means we're going to look at different businesses who could be doing similar things. For instance, we sell plants. We could acquire a network of uh, flower shops and then we could, we could just uh, supply them with the plants. Right? And we have one shop in every big town. Or we could acquire a company that actually sells plants to subway uh, places or to marketplaces, right? Decoration to corporate companies, whatever. They are on a very different segment of the market, but they could be clients to us. 
and they have a big network so we can look at acquiring them so that we benefit from their market and we can supply them with whatever we're producing we're just boosting the amount of clients we are going to get through them so vertical is about securing the, ch the, the supply chain and horizontal is about getting more clients by diversifying the, the, the distribution methods basically and as soon as you understand that which is we go back to the first point you were mentioning we can do growth through um, organic traffic my website the press whatever videos youtube and through lead acquisition with ads that's one way of doing it but then we can also think in terms of buying whoever is working in the process earlier and we can also acquire leads by working with people who are doing other things in parallel to us and that boosts the, the growth potential yeah exactly and if you have a business that is flourishing and you think about scaling i think by thinking about vertical and horizontal vertical and horizontal you have way more opportunities than if you think about diversifying in a new business that you don't know, don't know. And that's a good point because if you don't know, you don't know. Exactly. But by acquiring someone who knows, you can invest into them. You own the company, you own whatever shares of the company, mm -hmm. but they know the business and they can keep doing it. And it's a difference between trying to bootstrap something and trying to, to scale faster <laughs> because bootstrapping is most of the time your own experience again the market when you are acquiring it's their experience and yours against the market so it's a way bigger difference but of course the risk is bigger when you acquire something because you put more money than bootstrapping something but in the end look at the fees you will have in five years if you bootstrap and if you acquire maybe it's way than more than worth it so it's a different vision it's a different way of thinking but both ways is interesting is just acquiring companies underestimated. And there is a way, maybe we can make a little uh, parenthesis uh, on that one. Actually, acquiring a company is not necessarily something that will cost you money. You can definitely acquire a company by what you will bring to that company. So instead of paying them, I don't know, a, be, uh, a million dollars, to acquire, I don't know, 80% of the share, you say, okay, I pay you nothing, but I take 80% on what I will bring in addition to that company. So you mm -hmm. help that company grow, and in definition, slowly but surely, you get those shares because you buy back with the money you've win by the effort you've put in that business. But because it's, again, with gardening, the same field, you will go way faster. And especially if they are old <laughs> processes companies and by bringing uh, new processes inside it goes way faster you can be very creative there you can say okay i'm not putting too much money but i bring my expertise i bring my network i bring my suppliers because you don't have them a former client a client of mine acquired uh, shares in a company just because he had a network in asia and he could source whatever they were designing and building five times cheaper in Asia compared to manufacturing it in the US. And that gave them access to big chains like Walmart or whatever, right? So he didn't have to put a dollar in investment, but he gave a network to them and scale um, savings and distribution channels that they didn't have in the first place. So that was a good investment. Now that brings risks. We've been talking about the opportunities, there are risks as well. And the risks are important because when you talk about growth, people tend to see the positive aspect of it. They see mm. the exciting aspect. We're growing, we're growing, that's so good, right? <laughs> but growing is also a risk unless you anticipate. And I'm saying that because we've seen clients who actually nearly died because of excessive growth they for instance a client of ours used to be was an architect and he had a construction company and one day he said that's so good i've signed a million dollar kind of client what he didn't do was read the contract and the contract said that he was supposed to build whatever he was paid to build but he was supposed to start paying first and then they would pay him progressively based on what was delivered and his company was not big enough to start doing that kind of investment. So it nearly bankrupt him. So when you start growing like that, you have to take a few things into account. One is you have to know your customer. You have to make sure um, you're actually putting your eggs in the good basket. You need mm -hmm. to make sure that the customer is the right one 
the wording you're going to use is the right one, the strategy is going to be the right one, and which means not putting all the money at once, but trying to test, 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 and doing it little by little. There is a big point about knowing what the acquisition cost is. That's what I was just saying, doing little by little and testing the market. But another client of mine was saying, I don't understand because on paper, I should be making money and I'm selling, but there is nothing in the bank account. Why is that? And when we looked at the Shopify bank, uh, the Shopify uh, account, we realized that he didn't factor in the acquisition cost and the ads that he was paying for. Hmm. So the selling price was $99 and he was selling, but he didn't realize that he had a $35 gain of acquisition cost on the thing and the rest was the production. So all the money was gone. Yeah. And it was just an accounting mistake because nobody told him. So you have to know your business model and your cost structure to make sure that when you're growing, you're not killing yourself. Otherwise, there is a big problem in the first place, right? And it's a good example what you gave, um, because actually uh, in e-commerce, I've seen that so often that uh, guys are really happy about their product just tend to scale because they have good, done good numbers in the first two weeks. And after those two weeks, they just uh, up the budget to three times, five times, 10 times more and thinking, oh, if I did a ROI, um, ROI of uh, three, it will remain three. If I did a ROI of five, it will remain five. But the fact is, it's not necessarily right. It will change, it will adapt to the limit of the market, the limit of the target, to the opportunity of that product, to the awareness of that brand. And they do scale and they finish with finally putting their head in the number and they see that, okay, I've spent 1 million here in ads. I've spent in cost of product uh, 1 million. And in addition of that, I have all my fixed costs here and there, all variable costs. And in, in total, I've paid 2 million five costs and actually I've sold for 2 million and three. So I lost 200,000. Okay, but it's just because you didn't follow the numbers. And most of the times it happens in e-commerce and people that tend to love too much their product. <laughs> yeah, the product more than the solution, but that's uh, exactly the product more than the problem, but that's a topic for another video. Yeah. To just conclude on that point, and then I'm moving to the last point of the discussion, the last part of the discussion. But the way we summarize that usually is to say, scaling is a formula. Scaling is sales times organization. It's not sales plus organization because if you do it as an addition, then you can have sales plus zero organizations. You will still have the sales, mm -hmm. but that's sales, that's not scaled. If you want to scale that business that you have, that organization that you have, you need to have the sales with a, a multiplying effect that comes with the organization and the more organization you get, the better the sales. And progressively you increase both, a bit more sales, a bit more organization, a bit more organization allows a bit more sales back and forth. And that's important because that's a summary of everything we've, talked, we've just been talking about. Yes, there is lead acquisition, yes, there is growth, but that's because you've organized your scale, your, your, your strategy. That's because you've organized the lead acquisition process. That's because you've organized the way you were going to look at ads. That's because you've organized the way you, you're looking at how to build your organic traffic and your organic awareness. That's because you've organized the way you could acquire or partner with people that are above you in the supply chain or on the sides on the market. That's because you've organize the way you approach your customer by looking at data. That's because you've organized your cash flow and that's because you've organized everything. Last point, you also have to think in terms of team. You can't scale a business without thinking about a team. And we're not going to expand too much on that right now because we've actually um, recorded two very interesting, one video with um, Dimitri Krudenko, who's uh, the founder of Stripo. Uh, digital, uh, digital. Emailing. yeah, it's a digital solution for e-commerce. Digital solution for e-commerce, but most of his team is outsourced. It's not his team. He's not. He's paying them obviously, but they're not part of the team. They mm -hmm. are external, and you'll see that in the video. It's going to be below. The talents he gets by outsourcing means he can 
constantly refresh the talents he has and the ideas he gets. And the interview of Camila as well is interesting because she has built her little empire uh, for the architecture and civil engineering industry. And her job is to outsource talents so that people can grow and scale their own structures. And they wouldn't be able to do that if they didn't have that help because they don't, they don't have the time to build those teams. So the teams are also an important topic. And the teams don't have to be people who are part of your company constantly. They can be outsourced and bring a lot of value. So think about it as well. Yeah, I agree. And it makes a big difference for, for a company scaling because you can scale, but you can unscale depending of what situation you face. And having an external company that brings you the talent is way more balanced. So uh, you can adapt easier and faster in a short term period. And it makes a big difference. Okay, so we've speak about what we had to for this video. So it was a good time. Thank you, Antoine, for that. Thanks. And thank you, here. guys, for being here. Exactly. Guys, thank you for being here. And we we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.